What's up, everybody? I'm Tucker, and this week we're going to be doing a new segment that I'm calling Year Late Reviews. How this segment works is I'm going to be reviewing things that I recently watched or played that came out roughly a year ago. It doesn't have to be exactly 12 months. It could be, you know, closer to 11, closer to 13, 14, as long as around the same time period this year, it was released the year before. So because it's a year late, I probably won't care much about spoiling things. So, heads up. So for this first episode, what I'm going to be reviewing is Infamous Second Son. This game was released last March, so it's not quite a year yet, but it's close enough that it's going to work. So what this game is about is a dude named Delson Rowe, who is voiced by Troy Baker. We also did some facial capture stuff. So he sort of has a similar face. And this dude, he's in a comish, living up in Washington, doing his thing, you know, vandalizing things, whatever people do in their free time. But then this truck carrying bioterrorists, who are people with power over certain elemental things like smoke or lightning or concrete stuff like that they crash near where he is and they're like oh no things happening he goes over like picks up part of the truck they were in so that this guy can kind of get out of the wreckage and they touch and then ah he's got powers now and things freak out and this lady's all mean and puts concrete shards into everyone's legs there because they won't like say what's going on so he gets passed out, he gets passed out, he passes out for like a week or two, wakes back up, oh no, everyone's hurt, let's go to Seattle, find that lady, I'll steal her power too and come back and save everyone. So in the game you just run around in Seattle, different powers, shooting things out of your hand, running around the city all cool like, being a superhero sorta. But the game's whole thing is that you can be infamous or a hero so you still accomplish the overall same goals but you can be nice and like protect people or just be a dick about it and take out everyone around you no matter who they are the two main things that you do in the game are fighting and traversing across the seattle area and both of those things work really well the fighting is really fun you can shoot projectiles out of your hand or shoot bigger heavy projectiles you can whack people with this chain you're carrying or you have a special attack in each of the power sets that you get to use it's it works well traversing is real fun in the other games your character only had lightning powers so most of the time you were climbing around stuff or sliding on rails or power lines but getting up you always had to just hop climb there were a few little boost things, but it was mostly literally climbing up. In this one, though, you do climb some. A lot of it, the powers have unique ways to get up, so you don't have to do it. Smoke, for instance, you can go into a vent, pop up at the top of the building, get launched into the air, and then smoke dash from there, do whatever. Neon, you can literally run up walls, do whatever you want. Video, you get wings, so you kind of fly up the wall. Concrete, you can just run around. You can't climb with the dash one there, but its special move, instead of being offensive, is you can pretty much quadruple jump and hover. So they all have unique ways to get around the city, and they all work really well, and they're all really fun. And it's just, they did it right. They got that stuff really right. If you've played the other Infamous games, you might think this one feels a little different. I personally did when I first started. It didn't feel quite the same. It was the same basic ideas, but just kind of how the execution worked felt a little different. So that took a couple minutes of like sorting out why is this kind of weird. But then after that, I was happy with it. Everything works fine. The changes are just less sort of offensive powers for each set but that's okay story-wise just kind of 
straight through. Not a ton of crazy stuff happens. You meet all the conduits who escaped, take their powers, do some banter with your brother. That stuff was fun. I liked their whole dynamic because his brother does not like bioterrorists, conduits as they're technically called. So when his brother becomes one, he's like, mm, we should not do that. We should find a way to get rid of your powers and yada, yada, yada. Of course, at the end, you get the power to take the concrete out of the people. But then there's a good ending and a bad ending. I personally like the good ending a lot more. You don't kill the lady. You just encase her in some concrete and be like, hey, look, this is all the terrible stuff she's been doing. We're not bad people. And so then all the conduits who are in this special prison, they let them out. They're like, okay, we'll give you a chance to live alongside us. And then he goes back home, gets the concrete out of everyone, and it's all good because now he saved almost everyone except his brother. Spoiler, I guess, for a year late. Then in the evil ending, you encase the girl in concrete, the thrower of the tower so that she falls, dies, she just shatters. Then you go and break the prison, get everyone out, so everyone still gets out of the prison. But then when you go back home, you get there, and this lady who you're close to, it doesn't really explain exactly what their relationship is. She's just kind of the nice old lady that they're friends with there. She's like, saw you being a dick on TV to people. Why are you doing that? That's not nice. He's like, oh, I just want to get back. Save everyone, you know? We help each other. And she's like, no, no, we don't, we don't want you anymore. You're, you're too evil for us. You know, she doesn't actually say that, but that's pretty much what she says. He's like, but you can't can't live without me. I gotta save you guys. We don't want anything to do with you. So, closes the door on. He stands there for a second, all upset. And then he shoots up into the air and then comes back down. And it's... He's gonna destroy them. He's going to destroy the people that he spent all that time to save. Going to... That was a smoke explosion. That's what that was. He does that. And just pretty much kills them all. You don't see it. It goes black right before he hits the ground. But that's just what he does. It's just a... Why? A lot of the evil stuff is like that. Or it's... You don't know why anyone would consider doing the evil thing that he does. It's just the evil option. So you do it if you want to see it evil. Which I did past week or so. Played through both sides and platinumed it. So I did literally everything in that game. And so I saw all the evil stuff. All the good stuff. There is an add-on set of missions that you just have to be connected to the internet to do. Where it works with an account you have online you do back and forth stuff where you do some stuff in the game and you send it to the account on your computer and do some stuff with there and it goes back and forth and it tells some of the story from the other conduits and I thought that stuff was interesting and it was really cool how they bounce back and forth some of it was a pain to figure out on the computer so I just ended up looking up stuff because I didn't want to struggle through it for a bit but it was a really cool idea. I like what they did there. One of the best things about the game is just how gorgeous it is. It is really pretty. And all the powers look really cool. Neon is just beautiful running around city. Neon lights everywhere. Especially in the scenes at night where it's all dark. And then you're bright neon doing crazy stuff. It's really cool. Really big fan of that. The smoke ones always look really cool. You smoke dash, you turn into smoke for a second and appear somewhere else. It just looks really, really cool. They did a really good job making it super pretty. The characters look pretty good too. Like, faces are always hard to get right in games, but they did a pretty good job. They did face capture stuff for Troy, and I don't know if they did for any of the others, like I mentioned earlier. And he did a really good job, Troy Baker. He's a good, good voice actor. He, he's got some skills, and 
I liked what he did a lot. He did, his voice really works for this character. You understand what he's coming from, what he's saying. and Just really good. Good work, Troy Baker. Music-wise, it was all cool music. It fit. It was neat, but it's not super memorable or anything. I'm not looking at them up on YouTube to listen to them. It just fit well and was fun while playing. So, no complaints there. So final thought is that you should definitely play this game. If you have a PS4, get this game. It's fun. It's not the best game on the system, but it's a really good game and really fun. And you'll have a good time. You won't regret it, especially now that it's been out for a year. It's no longer 60. I got mine for 20 just a few weeks back, so no excuse not to get this game. I do, however, think the PS3 Infamouses might have been a little better. Just something about the way they work. I really liked the second one a lot, so I think I'd put that above Second Son. But Second Son is still really good, too. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, then also hit subscribe. Subscribe to the channel so that you'll be ready for the next year late review. I don't know how often I'll be doing it. Depends on how much people like it. Maybe I'll start doing it more. We'll see. Let me know in the comments what you want me to review next. Something that came out 2014 or very end of 2013. I could probably get away with. Just something roughly a year ago. Let me know in the comments what you want to see reviewed. And I will do my best to do that thing. Yeah. I'll see you all next week. Hopefully because you subscribed. Pew, 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 p